Hi, I'm Suzanne Matson, and in this short video we're talking about risk management, why it is so important and how you can do it really well. Now one of the keys to good risk management is to be proactive because this is all about identifying things that could impede on your project before they actually turn out to be issues. After all, it is much easier to manage something which is a potential threat before it actually turns out to becoming a threat or a real issue on your project. So it's all about being proactive and identifying these things up front. It is very important, of course, to have a process to follow. But let me emphasize at this point that following a risk management process is not necessarily about you sitting behind your desk and doing it all on your own. Risk management is a very dynamic process and you should do it in close cooperation with your team members and your stakeholders. Because your team members and your stakeholders are close to the project and they may see things that you don't see. So definitely don't treat this as an isolated project process which you do on your own. That may be where it starts, but it is not where it ends. So what are the steps to go through in risk management? Well, the first step is to create a risk register. That is simply, it can be in Excel, it doesn't have to be complicated. You set up a register where you track and record all of your risks and the actions that follow those risks. If you have never seen a risk register or you would like to download one, you can go onto my website at www.suzannematson.com and you can download one for free or simply search the internet. There's lots of them around. The second part of the process is to start identifying risks. And um, a good way is for you to start off by actually taking a step away, maybe even stepping physically away from your normal office environment and thinking about all the things that could go wrong on your project. What do you worry about? And in that process, look at all the different aspects of your project. It could be related to requirements, to estimation, to delivery, to technology, to rollout, training, whatever it is, look at all the different aspects of your project. There are risk um, lists out there that will help you to brainstorm in all of these different areas. After you've had a think on your own, as I said, go back to your project team and ask them what they worry about and also ask your stakeholders what keeps them awake at night. What have we not yet thought about? What could go wrong? That is really the best way of starting to identify risks on your project. Secondly, of course, you capture these risks on your uh, log, but you then start to analyze them and understand the root cause of them. When you understand the root cause of a risk, you're much more likely to be able to identify a way to mitigate it. After that, you move on to assessing the impact of the risk. How severe is it? What would actually happen if the risk became an issue? Is, it a, is there a high, medium or low probability for this? Then you look at the probability for the risk occurring in the first place. Is it likely to occur or is it not likely to occur? After you've looked at this, it's time to look at the risk response. The risk response is the things that you will actually do to lower the impact of the risk and to mitigate it from happening in the first place. Again, talk to your stakeholders and your team members to help identify the best way of addressing this risk becoming an issue in the first place. The next step is to assign an owner. On many projects, the project manager will assign him or herself to all of the risks. It may be appropriate that you take on some of the risk yourself, but in most cases, it is not. You really need to identify the best person on the project team or within the stakeholder community to own this risk. It's a person who needs to follow it and who needs to put in place the mitigating actions. It is very, very important to assign good owners and to make sure, of course, that the owner knows that you have assigned them to this item. The next step for you is to monitor the risks. Make sure that you monitor them normally on a weekly basis. Has anything moved? Have the risk responses been implemented? Is there a higher or lower likelihood of the risk occurring? And then of course communicate the risks. Normally you can include the top five or ten risks on your weekly status reports or certainly also make sure that you communicate them when you have your weekly or your monthly steering committee meetings. If a very big risk comes to light, 
make sure that you don't communicate it in writing to your stakeholders for the first time. If it's a big risk concerning budget, you may want to communicate it to your stakeholder or your sponsor in person. That gives you much better control over how it is communicated and you ensure that your sponsor in this case understands that you're in full control of it. And lastly, what I want to say is that risk can also be positive in, um, in terms of opportunities. So when you go through the risk management process, don't just identify potential threats for the project. Of course, that's a main part. But also identify and ask yourself what the opportunities are. Opportunities are there to be exploited. So definitely be aware of that side of the equation too. Thank you.